Hi guys, it's Sam. So the most frequently asked question I get is, once I'm done with this, how do I prep it to cut? Um, how do I turn it into a print and cut? So I'm going to show you how uh, I turn things that I've created um, into things that are ready to be sent to the printer. Um, and these are just things that I've taken from previous videos, my weekend planner, my to-do list, and my icon changing videos. And I haven't touched these. These are just how I left them uh, when I made them. So I'm going to show you how I get them ready to be cut. So first, uh, you want to make sure that things are grouped together. It just makes it easier. Um, for one, you, you won't accidentally move pieces around, and two, it just makes it easier when you only want to cut an edge. So I'm just going to group all of this together. I think this is one piece. Yep. Group them all together. Well, not all, but each individual one will group all the pieces together. Oh, looks like my trash can I had already grouped. Okay, so when I go, I haven't touched the cut settings at all, and I go up here and I click on cut settings. You see that everything is going to cut everything. So I don't want that. So for the weekend banner, I had already done an offset for it. I'm just going to hit cut edge. And what that's going to do is just cut the outer edge and it's not going to cut anything in between. If you don't want an offset, I would strongly suggest still doing one and just making it very tiny so you can't see it and then you can still cut that edge. Because if you hit cut edge without the offset, it's going to cut out each individual little flag. And it's going to make it kind of hard because some of them are touching on mine and some of them aren't. So it's going to cut each one out um, and it may even overlap and ruin these edges. So for the to-do list, I can also just hit cut edge and it's just going to cut that outside edge. If you want a little bit of buffer around it, go ahead and offset it. But if not, that one's also ready to go. Same with this one, just cut edge. However, this one is multiple pieces. So if I hit cut edge, it's going to cut out the top of the washer and the bottom part. And I do not want that. I would like it to be one solid piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the offset window. There's actually a few ways you can do this. This is one of them. I'll show you another way. Um, and you're just going to hit offset. And when you offset this, it's going to have this like bump here because it cuts in. And I don't really want that bump there. So I'm just going to bump this up to, let's see, 2.25. What's that look like? Almost gone. What's 0.3 look like? close enough. So just bump it up so you really can't see it anymore. And I know that's huge. We don't want that much white space around our sticker, but don't worry. I'm now going to do an internal offset. I'm just going to make it really big as well till I have the desired amount of white space between my washer and the offset. Maybe not that much. That looks like a good amount. And then I can delete this first offset. So now when I go back up into my cut settings, it's still cutting everything. My washer is grouped together, so I just have to select that once, and I'm going to hit no cut. And now it's just going to cut this offset that I created. If you don't like the way the offset looks, I'm just going to delete it right now just to show you. You can also create a box around it. And then also do the same thing, hit no cut on the washer and just cut the box out. I find this way a little bit more tedious because you actually have to edit the points on this one because the top of it's rounded and the bottom isn't. So you'll just bring it in to, if you don't want an offset, you know, as close as you can. Like I said, this one takes a little bit more time because of these rounded corners. And so you'll go up and you'll edit these points. And I'm just going to do one corner to show you. This is a uh, part of the program that takes the most patience, I think. But now you have this rounded corner here. And if you go up to your cut settings, it's just going to cut this outside box if you hit no cut on the inside, which this is selected as no cut. And so for the shopping cart, if you hit cut edge, it's still going to cut out all these pieces because there's no fill in here. So we're also going to offset this one. And I'm just going to do a really, really small one. And so if you don't want any white space around it and you do an offset that's really small, you still see it's cutting out these inside pieces and we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the offset 
not the actual cart, but just the offset, and hit release compound path. Oops, that was the cart. See, that's what we don't want. Let's see if I can just select the offset. If you want to select both of them and then hold down shift and click the cart, that will unselect it so you know you're just getting the offset. And then release compound. Really? Still? I only have the cart? You know what? We'll do it this way. So now we have the offset, right click and release compound path. And now each of these pieces is separate and I can delete the ones on the inside. So if you select them all, again, hold down shift and select this, the cart. Now you only have these pieces selected and you can just delete them. And now I'm just gonna put this back and you can highlight both of them and come up to your align window and just hit align center and align middle. And that'll put it right back where it's supposed to be. So now if I go back to my cut settings, it's still going to cut the cart. I'm just going to select just the cart and I'm going to hit no cut. And now it's just going to cut the outside of that cart for you. Again, if you want a bigger offset, that's up to you. But still, if you don't want these inside pieces cut out, you need to release the compound path and delete those ones. So I hope this uh, explained it for you guys. Um, this is how you do cut settings. I will show you how to change the blade settings too really quickly. Um, make sure if you're doing a print and cut that you add registration marks. Um, how do I turn these on? Why is it not showing these? Usually when you click it, it'll show it. Huh. Oh, I'm not even in the right window. I'm sorry. Forget I even did that. Okay, so you'll want to turn on um, your registration marks and make sure that you don't have anything uh, in the gray areas or past this uh, line right here. So this will need to be moved over. Everything else is fine. So um, the registration marks are there so the machine knows exactly where it's supposed to be cutting because it knows in the computer where they are and it can find them on your paper when you put it through. So you'll turn on your registration marks and you're going to want to select what kind of a uh, paper you're using. Oh, no, nope, it's in this one. So if you're just using copy paper, you know, and it tells you what setting, you know, is good. If you want your speed at 10, you can always adjust all of these. I'm just going to say that we're using white sticker paper. It doesn't matter if it's Silhouette brand or not. It's still going to um, be the same. So it says to have my, my blade is at 2. Um, this is not a suggestion. This is what it thinks that your machine blade is at. So if your machine blade is set at 3, you need to change it to a 2. Um, this is just so the computer knows what you have your blade set at. And then I always like to bump my speed way down because if it goes too fast around these corners, it can tear them up while it's cutting. And my thickness, if you want a kiss cut, I would recommend setting your blade on your machine and in your computer to either a one or a two. And I always make my thickness sub five. So on the safe side, I'm just gonna set it to a four. And this is what works for my machine. Um, it may not work for yours. You're really just gonna have to play around with these settings till you get them right. This machine is really finicky. Like, it needs a lot of light. Sometimes it, you know, doesn't cut straight on the line and it offsets it a little bit. Like, everything has to be just perfect for it to get the perfect cut. And it can be a little frustrating. So um, just have some patience with it. You know, if you get frustrated, go have a cup of coffee or something, come back. But there's tons of groups out there on Facebook for people to help you with this. Um, so you're not alone. If you are looking for group suggestions, feel free to just comment and I will send you a link to some great Facebook groups that will help you um, with your silhouette. So I hope this video was great for you guys. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, I really love the feedback because I don't know if I'm explaining things to where other people will understand them clearly because, you know, I know how to do it, but you don't. So tell me if, you know, these are helpful for you, if you fully understand it, if there's something I'm leaving out or you don't understand. Also, feel free to check out my other videos um, if you don't know how to do some things. I have a lot of great videos uh, on how to make specific things, how to, you know, change icon color, how to use a couple of the more uh, complex tools in the system. So please check them out, comment, subscribe, let me know how I'm doing, and... I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.